Hey Integrity fam, we're back with an exciting video for you and today we're discussing how you can find DOM-based cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. And I know those usually sound like a little harder to find. It's not as easy as reflected cross-site scripting or stored cross-site scripting, but we're breaking up with that myth today because I'm going to show you how you can easily do that. And with that, let's jump straight over here to your application. And this is coming by Boltzweger's Web Security Academy once again. We're having a shop. And the first thing we're doing is we're opening up the developer tools and we're looking at our sources. Because DOM-based cross-site scripting is taking place in the browser. It's client-side. There's no intercepting proxy needed. And what we can see over here is that we do have our HTML on like the main page and we can search for the term script. We can see here that we include some JS files. We do not have them under our control, so we cannot change them. And apart from that, we only see strings. So that's a dead end. What up next? We have another look at the application and we see details of, in that case, a beat the vacation traffic bus. We're doing the same thing over and over again and we check out the page. And once again, we search for script and see if there's any script that we are having under our control. We see some strings, we see some JavaScript, which is included, but then here we do have a script tag. And what we do see is that there is some magic going on. And for us, it's important to analyze that right now. So let's start in line 61, where a variable called stores is defined. Not really much we can do. 62, we do see that window location search is being searched for a store ID. So what does that mean? Let's have a look at the DOM XSS wiki. I'm going to link that link in the description, but what we have to do right now is we have to check if what we've just seen is a potential source for DOM-based XSS. And we saw that we were looking for the location.search function. And what is that doing? The search property of the location interface is a search string, also called a query string, that is containing a question mark character followed by URL parameters. Super complicated, what does it mean? Let's type it down in our console. And what we do see is question mark product ID equals one. Where is that coming from? Well, let's look at our URL. It's right in there. So what location search is doing is it's returning the string starting with the question mark in a URL. So what happens if we put down another parameter? Ampersand, we say test equals test, run location search again, and we do see, oh, that is also part of location search right now. So we have found a source. That means we can now insert something into a source. Next up, we have another look at the script that we have seen before and we do see that in that source we are searching for a parameter called store id so let's change our test parameter to store id and let's have another look what's going on if we do that we do see that we have added a item to the drop down selector and we called it test and we can see that over here option selected test is now available so we were actually capable of inserting data into the dom so let's see what we can do right now what happens if instead of saying test we go ahead and we close the option html tag so let's do that. We'll just say angle bracket, close option. And we also want to close the 
select HTML tag to get out of this drop down box. All right, so we're doing that and we're checking our DOM again. We see right now that test is outside of the select tag. Looking at the website, it looks like this right now. Test is just standing there idling. But we do have an idea right now where we can potentially insert something malicious. And let's have a look at the JavaScript debugger in our browser. We can hop over that script once we reload the page. We do see the stores parameter being created, containing London, Paris, Milan. We go ahead and in the store parameter, we do see the text that we've just entered. Let's go back to our script and have a look at the next line. And in here, we do see document write option selected store, which is our variable that we have under control, closing tag option. So we've already seen that this is actually enabling us to write to the website. But what have we found with that? In order to understand that, let's go back to the DOM XSS wiki and talk about syncs. We've actually found a DOM based sync with the document write sync. And let's have a look what we can do with that. So now we are running our script again and we do this very slowly to make it easy for you to understand what's going on. In the beginning, we're creating an empty text box, a drop down box. We are putting down the test parameter outside of this drop down box. And then we keep running that script and we do see our parameter called stores being filled with London, Paris, Milan being added to the page. So this is how you can use the debugger to understand the web app a little better. But what happens right now if we want to exploit this vulnerability? We could, for example, say image source equals zero and an on error event handler where we say alert access. And if all stars align for us, we will get access. And there we go, string access as popping up in an edit box. We have found a DOM based cross site scripting vulnerability. And yeah, let's just quickly reiterate what we were doing in this lab. So we started off by opening up our developer tools. We were looking at the page we're on, if there is any script that has a source that we as an attacker have under our control. We looked at the DOM-based access as wiki, found some sources and realized location.search is actually a potential source for DOM-based access as. We used the JavaScript debugger to walk through the vulnerable script and realized that there is also a sync in that script with document.write, which enables us to write something to the website, to the DOM. And within that vulnerable line of code, we have injected our payload that in the beginning just printed out a text call, or like a little line called test, which we later on exploited in a way that we've also added an image HTML tag that contain a JavaScript event handler with the on error event handler. And within that, we have pop an alert box screaming out loud access as. How cool is that? I hope you learned something new today. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe in the top right corner and I'll see you in the next video.